Hi everyone, I'm JD from Willow Band Journals. Welcome back to my channel. I am a journaler, journal maker and teacher of journaling courses. And today is day five of the Inspiration Journal course. Our collage prompt for the day is pattern. So I've got a whole bunch of sewing patterns here on my desk from various different pattern pouches that I got from op shops or thrift shops. And I get different brands like Butterick and Simplicity, whatever brands there are. But I specifically look for ones that have the illustrated um, patterns on the front. Um, and I specifically love the vintage looking ones. And I often turn those into journal covers, the pouches themselves into journal covers. The papers inside I love using as pages of journals. And then these tissue papers, these are fun because these make great backgrounds and great for collage. And just thinking about it now, I think they would actually work really well for decorating envelopes as well. Um, so I love using napkins and pretty tissue papers to decorate envelopes. I've never tried it before with these pattern papers, but I think they would work really, really well. So maybe, I will have a play around one day and get my glue stick out and stick some of these patterns to envelopes. And I think that would be really cool to add to journals. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, I'll have a play around with that. And when I have made some envelopes with that tissue paper from the patterns, I will come back on my channel and share that with you and see how they look. Um, I think it would be really interesting and cool. Um, so I've also got these I'm not sure what you call them, like brochure type things. When I went to the op shop one day, um, I found two binders, like spiral bound binders or folders, and they came with a whole bunch of these pattern pages. They're really large and they're, they fold out. And I was really impressed by the outside um, pages. They had lovely photographs, I guess, of the fabric or the embroidery or the pattern what it looks like and then on the inside it kind of shows how to do it I guess and the um, stitches that you need to do and the embroidery and yeah it was really really beautiful a lot of them had lovely colors lovely florals some had butterflies and things like that uh, really pretty so I've just got a bunch that I pulled out here with blue as the main color since blue is my favorite color and I ended up creating a bit of a blue page I suppose but with a background of those tissue paper patterns which is really effective um, but you'll see that as we go along this one here I thought this doily or linen was really pretty with the pale blue pastel blue and then it's got this kind of white or silver thread so I'm just cutting that out and it has a really cool, interesting shape to it. So that will be fun to add to my collage and um, yeah, the layers will look nice with that kind of scalloped edge. And yeah, I basically just go through these brochures and cut out anything that I think is interesting, anything that represents sewing. So I cut out a needle and thread, I cut out, um, or I use with the tissue paper in particular, um, a part where it has a pair of scissors and also a part where it shows a sewing machine, the foot of the sewing machine, I think it's called. Um, so I liked using those little intricate detailed parts of the patterns just to represent more of what this page is about, like the sewing, that kind of thing. This, I love these pieces. Um, they remind me of little journaling cards or make me think of journaling cards. And so this is what I use for my journaling space on the page. Ready-made, decorative, beautiful journaling space. I love it. I pulled out a whole bunch of these brochures and yeah, cut out different pieces. And lots of it is really beautiful. Like, look at this. Look at these beautiful flowers and... Yeah, I could have used a lot. <laughs> in the end, I cut out more than I needed for the page. But yeah, I just started by uh, finding anything that spoke to me. These words, blue inspiration, I was thinking maybe I could add that to my collage. And then maybe that would spark some sort of prompt about my love of blue and being inspired by the color blue. 
And that's just like an example of how the words and images that we choose that resonate with us and that we put onto our pages can then create the journal prompts that we use. So for example, if I was to use that phrase, blue inspiration, I might talk about how blue became my favorite color when I was eight years old. Maybe I could talk about or write about um, my favorite blue things. Maybe I could journal about how I love the ocean and the beach and the my favorite shade of blue can be found in the sky at twilight you know that color where it just it goes from blue to green and just at that transition point that's my favorite shade of blue I even named it <laughs> I named it twilight blue since you can only see it well not only but you see it at twilight you also see it in the ocean just at that point before the blue turns green um, it, you see that sometimes uh, depending on what ocean you're at and what time of day it is obviously with the sun on the water and all that kind of thing but yeah love 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 that color and you, you can see how yeah the word blue inspiration or the phrase blue inspiration can kind of spark your imagination it can spark your memory and all those associations that our brains are just so good at making and yeah I was thinking maybe that's something I could have done but I didn't end up using that phrase on my page and went in a different direction I went more of the pattern sewing theme and oh I love that piece by the way see how it kind of looks like half of a t-shirt or like a half of a vest I, I really enjoyed that it says waistcoat so yeah half of a waistcoat um, and I like that that can just be laid down directly onto that page and it provides a nice background. I wanted to include some of this pattern as well because it's blue. So I wanted to have a bit of contrast, some with the black and some with the blue. This piece here that's all kind of scrunched and folded, that came, I think I found it like in between the pages of a book or in, the, in between the pages of a pattern sewing book. Um, and I always love finding those pieces, like when people tape stuff into a book or they yeah, slip in different notes or um, cards. Sometimes I found a bookmark inside of a book um, and I love yeah, going through books at op shops and seeing if anything falls out. It's so, so fun. It's like a treasure hunt. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think find it really special and keep those things. So anytime I find anything like that, I put it aside and they're part of those things, one of those things that I collect and gather that I love using my journal because I just love that history that it has some sort of story and even if I don't know the specific story, obviously someone out there um, thought that was important enough to put inside the book pages and I don't know, I love having that history or that sense of, I don't know, importance of, with that piece. And then putting it into my journal and having that as a layer in my own journal that just adds to the richness of the collage and the journaling. Um, same with handwriting. Whenever I find handwriting inside a book, especially things like inscriptions or dedications or things like that, especially when it has the date, I, I love that kind of thing. And I will often rip out those pages that have inscriptions or handwriting. Again, just collecting, gathering things to put aside that I can use one day in my journals. So I had a little bit of a play trying to lay it out. Um, this page did take me quite a while to figure out how to um, put it all together because, yeah, like I said, I had quite a lot of different elements and, it, it, yeah, I didn't use them all. had to be selective and had to yeah, take my time just figuring out how to arrange them all so that it suited my eye. But yeah, we started off with this waistcoat piece because I loved how, um, I just love the shape of it. I quite like um, vests, the look of vests and that kind of thing. <laughs> Little Luna um, has come to say hello. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I just, as you keep watching my process here, let me chat about where I did end up going with my journaling prompt. And oh, I should share with you what the journaling prompt is for those of you who would like to actually add writing to your journals. So the journaling prompt is fashion. Again, I could have gone many ways with the journaling prompt. I could have gone the direction of, for example, my grandma. So my grandma liked to 
crochet, knit, um, embroider. Um, she, you know, was one of those grandmas who had a basket of thread and needles and wool and that kind of thing. So she she was a quilter as well, and she would have fabric pieces and things, you know, by her feet, and she would be in her chair. Um, doing something crafty with her hands to do with fabric and so this page as I was putting it together it really you know reminded me of her and I was thinking as I was putting it together maybe I would like to yeah journal about those memories of my grandma and that kind of thing um, but in the end when I sat down to actually add my writing to the page it went in a different direction again I'm just letting the pieces speak to me and they tell me what to journal about and so you know we're looking at a page with clothing pattern designs and so where that took my mind at this point in my life you know because if you sit down at your desk or sit down at any time at different points in your life different things will resonate with you and you know you'll be prompted by different things so who knows at a different time in my life maybe this wouldn't be the prompt that I would go with but for whatever reason <laughs> fashion is the journaling prompt and I guess that's because I'm currently sort of going through a wardrobe makeover this is something that I've shared with the journalist taking part in the intentional life course and I'm being intentional about the clothing that I buy so let me just share a bit of background um I had a simple living phase back in about 2012 um, where I yeah, really got into one of these things called Project 333 where you wear 33 items of clothing for three months and you pack away all your other items of clothing. And it was a really good experiment for me to try. I found that I loved it and I kept going after three months. Um, and I put in place some fashion rules for myself where I wouldn't buy an item of clothing unless I was replacing an item or unless I needed it for like a work uniform or back then I was in a choir for my church um, and the uniform that we wore was a black t-shirt and black pants. I already had the black pants but I didn't have a black t-shirt so I allowed, you know, I was allowed to go buy, <laughs> allowed <laughs> my own self-imposed rules <laughs> to buy it myself a black t-shirt for that occasion. Um, and it was, yeah, a really good experience for me doing that Project 333 because it ha helped me to become aware of um, how I saw myself through fashion or expressed myself through fashion and what was going through my head and my relationship to clothes and that, that kind of thing. And I realized that... Um, yeah, I really appreciated that 333 experiment. Um, I didn't have exactly 33 items of clothing, it's just a rough guideline. And going forward, I still like that principle. I do have more than 33 items of clothing now, um, but I still like having more of a um, capsule wardrobe, or what do they call it, like a uniform, uniform dressing capsule wardrobe where you don't need as many clothes because all of the outfits, sorry, all of the items of clothing go together to make the different outfits. Um, and I really enjoy that. So that kind of works for me though, because I do have my pretty solid color scheme. It's either black, well actually, it, yeah, it's black and blue mostly, black, blue, white, gray. Those all fit together. And so I can kind of mix and match between those colors. Um, but yeah, it's about knowing your own relationship to clothing. So what works for one person won't work for someone else. When I was doing Project 333, um, having I was you know talking to people about it and some people would say, no, I don't want to do Project 333 because that's how they express themselves through their clothing, through the fashion. And it gives them great joy having you know 20 pairs of shoes or being able to accessorize with handbags and jewelry and hats and scarves and all that kind of thing um, or maybe yeah they just get great joy out of seeing a closet full of colors whereas me I'm yeah I just have a closet full of blue and black <laughs> I don't need the other colors the other colors um, 
don't make me happy like the way blue does. But if you know, if you're a person who, you know, you all the colours of the rainbow in, in a wardrobe makes you happy, then more power to you for recognising that about yourself and go for it. Fill your closet with colours. <laughs> and if you love accessorising, go for it. Um, gather those pieces that bring you joy. For me, I was never really into fashion and that kind of thing. I had phases, you know, here and there. My younger days, I really loved jewellery. Now I don't, well, I still love jewellery, but I wear the same pieces day in, day out. Whereas when I was younger, I would wear, you know, a different pair of earrings and a different necklace and a different bracelet every single day of the week. Whereas I kind of got sick of that the older I got and just wear the same stuff every single day. Um, so yeah, we we change as well, depending on what season we're in and that, that kind of thing. But the point of this journaling anyway, is just to explore that, just to reflect. Use journaling as a tool in your life to reflect. And yeah, journaling for me helps me to know myself better, know the world better, know other people better. And then that helps me to then um, understand my relationships to myself, to other things, because we have relationships to people, of course, but we also have relationships to ideas, we have relationships to um, dreams, passions, we have relationships to objects and possessions, and we have relationships to clothing and fashion. So what is your relationship? You might think you don't have any, but um, the, it, it's something, if that makes sense. And you can use this opportunity uh, use this journaling prompt as an opportunity to yeah really explore that and maybe learn something from it, um, like the way that I learned from Project Three Three Three, that was just a tool to be able to get me to think about my relationship to clothing so that I could use clothing in a more practical, functional way that you know fit with my lifestyle, fit with my. Um, budget fit with my um, needs for whatever work or job I had whatever uniforms I required that kind of thing um, rather than just because when I first did this project I realized that I didn't think about it and for example I would just go to the shop and buy a piece of clothing just for the sake of buying something without actually going do I need this item does it actually bring joy in my life um, how is it going to add something good to my life? Yeah, I'll just go there and just buy something for the sake of buying something. Now, um, I can buy something and it has much more meaning because either I need it or um, it's serving some sort of purpose or because it just simply gives me great joy. Before, I used to just, yeah, literally whenever I went to the shops, buy a hat or buy a skirt or buy a jumper or whatever. Um and for a while there, for a few years, I think, I hardly bought a single item of clothing um, unless it was to replace one or for the uniform. But, you know, when you're just replacing something or buying something for a uniform, it doesn't. It's, I didn't get it for joy. I got it for purely practical reasons. So now I've kind of been getting out of that mode because I've been sort of in that Project 333 mode from 2012 to just up to recently. And I've had to sort of train myself the opposite way to start now I get my backstory again <laughs> I've been wearing clothes literally since my high school days I'm that kind of person for some reason like I'm not a fashion person but so I just wear what, what's comfortable I've always been comfort over fashion and um, I tend to just wear the same thing over and over again to the point where even if it has holes in it and it's getting threadbare and see-through I have a hard time letting go of it and um yeah, I get super attached to it, not in a sentimental way, I don't think, but more in just a like, this is familiar and this is comfortable and I don't want to have to think about what else to wear because this is just what I know and this is just what I'm used to and yeah, but at the same time, because I've been wearing the same clothing since I was a teenager, um, you know, you grow older and your fashion sense changes and your fashion style and taste may change. And yeah, I was just wearing the same t-shirts that I was wearing in high school. Um, and for years now, I've been wanting to do a wardrobe makeover because the older I got, the more I realized what kind of clothing I did like. Um, and that's, you know, I like dresses and I like skirts and I like feminine, girly, floaty 
floral clothing, that kind of thing. Simple, but girly. Um, I call it street, street girly, street smart, girly, simple. That's kind of my style. I don't know if that's an official style, but that kind of thing. And um, yeah, but I never did anything about it because of my self-imposed Project 333 rules. Um, so I, that's what I mean by I had to train myself now that my high school clothes have been, you know, getting threadbare and the holes, like I would still wear clothes with holes in them. <laughs> <laughs> but um suddenly the holes started getting bigger and more numerous and I finally got to the point where I was like okay this is probably isn't um outdoor you know worthy of <laughs> outdoor wearing anymore and I finally threw some t-shirts out maybe three t-shirts I even got rid of two pairs of leggings because they had holes at the knees and I was holding on to those things holding on to those things Again, not because of any great attachment, but just because I, I just can't be bothered shopping for clothes and, um, you know, fa- fashion wasn't my thing. And so I was just like, ah, I can't be bothered. I just wear this because it's what I always wear, even if it has holes in it. But finally, I literally replaced them. I got two pairs of black leggings. And when I got home with them, I chucked out the ones that had holes at the knees. <laughs> um, but I mean, that's taken me years. I've been wearing those leggings with holes for two to three years um so that's what I mean this is my relationship to clothing when I look back on it and kind of assess anyway so I've had to train myself now that my clothes have started to disintegrate like literally disintegrate (laughs) to the point where I have to be like okay you can't hold on to these anymore um I've had to kind of train myself to um be able to buy clothes again without um, feeling guilty or that kind of thing and it's been a learning curve uh, but I have found when I've worn my favorite items of clothing that I feel different I feel like I sit up straighter and I feel girly and pretty and happy <laughs> so yeah I hope you have fun with that journaling prompt about fashion and maybe it gives you some time to reflect on your own relationship to fashion and how you can get the most joy out of it Um, and yeah, here's just a little sneak peek at the journaling video that is up on my Patreon, uh, where I challenge myself each time I add writing to the page to also add something else to the page to share, you know, part of my story and represent a piece of me. And this is some lace, um, from the lovely Joanna, one of my beautiful patrons, big shout out to her. Um, and yeah, because it's a fashion page and a pattern page I definitely wanted to include some sort of fabric from clothing in my real life onto the page to give it some texture and then later on I share um, a photo that I stick on the page of me in one of my new outfits for my wardrobe makeover that's slowly happening over time (laughs) and yeah in that video with the journaling I share about what I actually journal about and how I got this ideal dream of being able to wear two skirts and dress like a princess every day (laughs) anyway if you want to see the rest of this journaling video you can check that out over on my patreon the link is down below in the description box and hope you have fun with this prompt and i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys a big thank you to my beautiful patrons who supported me in april thank you so much for allowing me to do this for another month it really means the absolute world to me and i could not do this without you if you would like to become a patron in may i will leave the link below to my patreon down in the description box that's where you get access to more videos from me personal updates printables And if you're a Ruby patron or higher, you get every single digital kit from my Etsy with a new new kit each month. If you would like to support my channel through a one-off donation, you can do that through PayPal to my email address or through Buy Me A Coffee. And if you would like to be part of any of my journaling courses, I'm starting them again in May for the month of May. So feel free to email me to register and I hope you have fun journaling your life because your stories matter.